Oh, and here we've stumbled across the most fearsome apex predator of the jungle, the house lion. You can see him here carefully stalking his prey and waiting for the perfect opportunity to pounce. This mousey really should be more careful wandering into such dangerous territory like this. Oh, and it was only a matter of time before nature ran its course. He just does not stand a chance against these lion's powerful jaws. Yeah, this mousey's days are numbered. You've got astronomy and physics, botany and ecology, zoology, geology, chemistry and biology. Wanna understand the world and all that it is? Then sit back and kick it with this list of science whiz. Welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Miss Liz the Science Whiz. On today's episode, we're going to talk about food webs and how energy is transferred within them. First, let's get a good look at a food web in action. In this ecosystem, we see a food chain containing organisms such as the grass, an insect, and the squirrel. A food chain is an ordered arrangement of plants and animals that all feed on the organism below it in the chain. As one organism eats another, energy is passed up the food chain. Within this ecosystem, however, squirrels are not the only organisms that eat the insects. The geckos in this same area eat them as well. But how is this possible? It is because they are both part of the same food web. A food web is a complex network of food chains within an ecosystem. Within a food web, there are many different types of organisms. Take, for example, this food web of the Florida Everglades. The organisms in green are called producers. A producer is an organism that can make its own food. Most producers are what we call plants. Producers are found in abundance in most ecosystems and make up the base level of the energy pyramid. Many organisms have to eat something in order to get energy. In our food web, the organisms in yellow are called herbivores. An herbivore is an organism that only eats plants. Herbivores are considered primary consumers making up the second level of the energy pyramid. Some organisms don't get enough energy from plants alone, so they also eat other animals. These organisms in purple we call omnivores. An omnivore is an organism that eats both plants and animals. Omnivores are typically considered secondary consumers making up the second level of the energy pyramid. There are a few organisms that do not eat plants at all. These organisms, seen in red, we call carnivores. A carnivore is an organism that only eats animals. Carnivores are usually called tertiary consumers and make up the top levels of the energy pyramid. As we move through the food web, we can see how energy is transferred from organism to organism. All organisms need energy to maintain homeostasis, but they do not get all of the energy of their prey. So what happens as this energy is transferred? The law of conservation of energy tells us energy cannot be created or destroyed, only changed. This means that some of the energy a producer or prey has is transferred into the environment as thermal or even kinetic energy before the rest is transferred to the consumer. We use the pyramid to model the available energy in an ecosystem. The majority of the energy is found in the producer level. This directly relates to the number of producers we find in the ecosystem. As you move up the pyramid, there is less and less available energy, which means less and less organisms in the higher levels. Ever wonder why you don't see as many hawks as you do mice in an ecosystem? This pyramid shows you why. The biotic makeup of an ecosystem is directly impacted by any change in these levels. Add a carnivore and all of a sudden the second level herbivores start to see a decrease in their population. This could lead to an increase in the producer population as well. Most ecosystems correct themselves over time, but any drastic change could lead to the extinction of an organism. In our own backyard, the Florida Everglades has been struggling with food web disruption for years. After Hurricane Charlie, Florida pet owners began releasing their pet pythons into the wild. Now this ecosystem, which only had one apex predator, the alligator, suddenly has two.
To model how energy is transferred from one organism to the next, try this at-home experiment. You'll need a large measuring cup of water, two cups, and a friend. Fill your first cup with 500 milliliters of water. That's about two cups. Hold your cup at a 90 degree angle while your partner stands behind you with their arm outstretched. Pour the cup over your shoulder without looking or moving your arms. Now switch places and repeat the process. <laughs> now measure how much you got in your cup. Hopefully you got a little bit. This shows how energy goes from one organism to the next. Try it out. That's our show. Thanks for watching. Remember, the smallest change can have the biggest consequence. And as always, keep investigating. You've got astronomy and physics, botany and ecology, zoology, geology, chemistry, and biology. Want to understand the world and all that it is? Then sit back and kick it with this. This is Science with.